Hey, what's up? This is Paul Soltz from Super Easy Apps, and I wanted to do another video. So I talked about submitting this app, I think, to the App Store in my last video, and I've mentioned that we've been working on it. This is a new Mac app. It's a productivity app. It's something that I've been really wanting to get out the door. And so I submitted it about seven days ago, and I wanted to show you how fast Apple was on approving it. So that was at 3.29 p.m. on a Thursday. And then within... Uh, a little bit of time, I got the in review, and I think that was at around 7, 7.18, so less than four hours or so, or four hours, to, to get it into the in, in review on App Store for Mac, which is really cool, because it's never been that fast. Every time I've submitted in the past, it has been ages to get feedback from Apple. So this is really cool that they've uh, really streamlined the approval process. And then shortly after that, I got an email saying that I was rejected. Now, I don't think I can show you the official response from Apple, other than that the binary was rejected. So this is kind of the screen under the activity. You can sort of see that there's a, a unresolved issue. Now I've gone back and forth with them a, a little bit. I told them that I, I think I know what the problem is and I'm trying to figure out a fix for it. And uh, if I didn't know what the, the fix was, I was just gonna remove support for Sierra because it's really just an issue with running on Sierra. So that sort of got me down this path. And so they sent me a screenshot and I already knew what this was gonna look like. I was just hoping that it wasn't the thing. And they sent me this screenshot. So it looked like this. And uh, what we can see here is that uh, there's this weird black box. And it's really annoying because it doesn't do that on High Sierra. It only does that on Sierra. So then that sent me down the rabbit hole. I actually learned about something called Vagrant, or Vagrant um, which is really cool. This allows you to spin up a dev environment. Now, I didn't fully get this working, but it works with VirtualBox. And I've done this before in the, the last contract job I was working at because I was using VirtualBox uh, as well as Parallels for VMs. And I, I did figure out how to install Sierra or High Sierra. I think I was installing Sierra on a VM because I needed to test something in a clean install. Um, and then I found this like one easy step for like setting up this thing so I didn't have to jump through all these hoops because I had to like figure out all the commands to run. Super pain in the butt. Uh, so I, I started down this route um, and I was going to hand this off to my intern and then it just it didn't um, it didn't fully work and I didn't want to bother like setting up the state. So I, I brought in my other Mac. I had another Mac that I haven't updated. Um, so this would be running the VM and... Uh, what I really needed to do is I needed to be able to try a couple different things uh, with the, the Mac app on the Sierra install versus the High Sierra, because right now I'm on High Sierra. You can see in the, the top, if I go to uh, about this Mac, you'll see that I'm in High Sierra. So I really needed to, uh, and I'm on the 2016 MacBook Pro, uh, I really needed to run this. So this sets up the default VM. And the problem I had is I needed to like import all my credentials and it was like a pain in the butt because the, I don't know if it's working now, but I couldn't resize. Copy and paste wasn't working. So it was really frustrating. And I remember having issues with this in the past. Actually, I think they don't have full support for this, which is probably why this was frustrating before uh, to get all my credentials over there because I had to manually type passwords and import things. So I never got that fully functional. Um, and if I remember correctly... I don't know if this works uh, on Mac. I, I'd have to look into that, but that's how you can run sort of Mac and a VM on a Mac and to, to test things out. But I didn't end up going down that route. So I'll just close this down because that's gonna take up a lot of power from my computer. But that was a really cool find that I found um, that it can just spin up a box. And well, that's a weird glitch. Uh, I don't know if you're seeing that glitch in the video itself, but uh, that window is not drawing correctly. So what I ended up doing is I just popped over to my Mac Pro, which I have, which I used to do for a lot of video editing, and I haven't been using much since I got the MacBook uh, update. And uh, the Mac Pro was great because it was completely silent when I record. When I record with the MacBook Pro, it does make some noise and my microphone picks up some of that. So I, I might start using the Mac the Mac Pro again, the, the downside is it can't support retina screens, but I still have my Thunderbolt 27 inch display that's in front of me right now. So that's not really a problem here at my office at work. Um, I'm not sure what's going on here. Let's just quit. Okay, so I figured out the problem. I don't know why it exists, but if I open up the timer app, this is all Swift code now. So this is a totally new code base. I don't even know how many lines of code it is yet. 
uh, probably on GitHub. I can figure that out. But uh, it, it got rejected, and now I have a fix, and there's been a couple other fixes that we've uh, imported as well. So this is the new timer app. Um, there was a, a few usability issues from our last beta test. We've really cleaned it up. I've polished up the user interface. I've got all new icons. I've got all new theme support. Uh, I, I did a video previously. If you want to check that out, I'll, I'll link that down below. I'll just have to make sure that I, I link to that video. And on the design stuff with Sketch. So I, I totally redid our interface and we now have theme support, which is super fun. And what really was the problem is if I go into preferences, uh, this should work on High Sierra, but it didn't work on Sierra. So that was the super frustrating part is this window for choosing the sound uh, does not get rid of one of the black backdrops. And I don't know why it exists, but it's part of the animation and it just doesn't clean up properly. So we fixed that by changing one setting in the storyboard. And it was a hunch. Uh, I, I really had no idea how to fix the problem. I didn't know if I had to like throw in a, a different view or programmatically like repaint stuff or anything like that. Um, but this isn't that complicated. It's just a, a, a scroll view. It's my table view. And this is sort of like the default class that you get when you drag it out. So that's just there. And... Uh, there's nothing fancy about this. It's just in a, a tab view controller, which you can see in the top right. And just turning off the crossfade option, which is right up in this top corner, fixed the bug. So I have no idea why, um, but it did. And it still looks like I might be having an issue here, but uh, there's always there's always something else to, to fix. Uh, otherwise, this app is looking pretty good. I'm seeing like the theme's not quite reset properly. Um, so there might be some background color. I'm seeing an extra sort of border. I, I don't know if I enabled something by accident or what, but I've got a mini mode. I've got a large mode. This is a, a text-driven timer. Um, I've got some new commands that my intern Eric was working on implementing, so that's coming shortly. Uh, but I'm about to send this out to beta testers again to sort of get some additional feedback. And one of the annoying things that I found that I didn't realize with Mac apps is that there's no like beta testing service so you have to do all this extra work. And I didn't want the beta to last forever. So recently, before I submitted another beta update with all these great changes, I wanted to make sure that the beta would expire uh, because that's one nice thing about iOS apps is they do expire. It's a, sort of a, a good thing and a bad thing. It's good because it allows you to keep moving forward with iterations and not have people stuck on old versions. Uh, but it's kind of annoying on, on a developer front because you have to keep updating the app. And so if it's not under complete active development, then it's kind of like this extra chore. And that's kind of how I treated my coffee app right now is it's just been an ongoing beta. And, and I'll be talking more about that in the upcoming videos. But this is the timer app. I love it because it's good for productivity. I use this when I'm writing. So if I want to write for 20 minutes, I just type 20. It starts the timer right away. It's really convenient. You can pause it. You can restart it. Uh, if you want to restart and pause, you can hold the alt key and you can click on restart and it will do that as well. And we're adding some more support for different keyboard commands like reset. That's not currently in the beta uh, that I've sliced out and I'm sending to my beta testers, but that's coming shortly. So it's a text-driven timer. You can even do something like 30 seconds and it will just start the, the countdown. We don't support days yet. There's some other things that we don't support, but we've been able to sort of see how our testers are using it. It's really cool. I'm excited to get this through the app review process. Uh, we have this really slick tutorial that I'm excited about. I do need to refilm since we've changed the design. So one of the big issues that we had with the original design is that we were locked into this Helvetica font and it was popping when the, the text sort of changed. So it shifts a little bit when there's ones. So I needed a monospace font and, and that's what we had to end up figuring out that there is an API on, on the new uh, font system to get a monospace font, but getting that to work appropriately and then sizing it down and, and sort of scaling it up so that we can like resize and stuff like that was a little bit challenging. I think we figured out a lot of those quirks. Uh, now supports full screen mode and everything like that. And it looks great. Uh, super easy to use. The All the buttons are in the top right corner to sort of interact with it. And uh, you can just start that timer and it can count down. So super fun app. I, I really like using it. And that's the one reason why I've sort of pushed forward on this app is because it's been so useful for me as both a developer, a writer, um, to just get work done. I, I even gave it to my sister who was finishing up her 
her PhD stuff and she had to finish some some writing and I was like, just use this app, set it for 20 minutes, do not press the backspace button, uh, just write, just brain dump. This is how I've been able to write a lot faster and that's one of the reasons I built this. So super slick app, we've got this fun little tutorial that sort of walks you through the different features. I do need to reshoot these, these videos, but it's looking a lot better for our beta test and I'm hoping to get it on the app store soon. It's not perfect and I, there's a lot of room for improvement, but it's fully functional for me. It's very helpful for me. It's a single timer, so it doesn't support multiple timers right now because I really want to focus the design. There's not a whole lot of feature support. Again, uh, that's more work. Uh, I want to say there's over 2,000 or 3,000 lines of code to support all of the simple features. And <clears throat> a lot of that work has been on the parsing and just making sure it's reliable. And I still have to do more reliability testing, but I've been dog fooding it, so I use it on a daily basis, and it's been overwhelmingly a, a great app to work on. There's still some polished stuff that I'd like to get in there, um, but that's pretty much where I am right now. And so maybe in the next one, I'll be talking more about this app, some of the upcoming features, and uh, we're using a, a few different things. We're using Atlassian's um, development sort of tool. This is called SourceTree for viewing our different branches. And, and we can see that Eric just pushed a new fix for the always on top fix with the, the system preferences. Um, I just incorporated the, the beta expiring code logic, and I might do a blog post on that just to share the type of code. Now it's not ultra secure, but it's, it's useful for me to sort of cut off support for legacy software that I'm not going to support like 60 days into the future. So I've got it on a 60 day timeout, super cool. Um, very easy sort of thing. And I might, I might post that code on, on uh, GitHub so that other people can take advantage of it because I found that really sort of a challenging experience of launching a beta test on Mac, uh, nothing is really given to you for free. And so this is all Swift stuff, but Apple's really not making it easy to do beta testing on Mac. And if you want to go offside the, the app store, then you have to do even more work. And I wasn't really willing to commit that much time into it. I just wanted a fun little project that helps me with productivity, helps me with writing, and that's sort of where this came out of. All right, so if you have any questions, comment down below. And if you like this video, if this was interesting, if you want to learn more about SourceTree or if you want to learn about GitFlow or Git or how we're working in a team environment with our, our different stuff, just let me know. Um, this has been a lot of fun to work on. And I, I'm really excited that uh, we fixed this one issue. Oh, one other new screen that I really like is the shortcuts menu. Now, again, there's always room for improvement, but I find that super helpful to have shortcuts available that you can just open and close when you need to, to learn some of the different syntax or some of the keyboard shortcuts that you can do. It's just the command uh, slash that will bring this up. And I think it's in our window. We've got the help up in here. So, and I think it's, oh, it's right here. So it's in the, under the help window. Since the window is open, we can see it there as well. So that is the, the timer app that got rejected from the app store. Uh, I'm not too worried because I think the new update, once I send it up to Apple again, is going to get approved. If you've got any questions about the approval process, let me know. I've got my contact information down below. Subscribe. I should have a little thing right here to subscribe for more updates. If you're interested in learning how to publish apps or how to work on app ideas or just how to improve your productivity. Uh, I'm really excited to help you on your journey and I hope that you have an awesome day and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.